Hey guys! Hey! It's uh, Keegan and Daniel, we're here, we're gonna do... This is a, kind of a weird thing on the channel. We're looking to kind of expand kind of some of the stuff we do. And Daniel and I decided that we're gonna do this uh, untitled anime review slash podcast thing. Uh, we're not quite sure exactly what the final structure of this is gonna be. Patent pending. Patent pending. <laughs> um, so we're not quite sure what, what the overall structure, the overall length. Uh, we're not even quite sure what you're currently looking at. Um, but as we go along, so, we're going <laughs> to... It's a very much work in progress yeah, the entire time. Uh, this is this is officially a pilot. <laughs> um, we're, we're looking for the executive producer to come in and like tell us that we got to like cut the side character and we got to recast the lead and all that. Um, but... Uh, Overall, what we're pretty, the only thing we're pretty sure about is that we're going to try and talk about a couple of hopefully current stuff. Um, so stuff from the current season. And uh, we're, uh, we're probably going to give you some first impressions on some a couple of things that we just started. So like we're behind the eight ball if you're looking to start another show because you dropped the one that you were currently watching. We're going to talk about shows that we are watching or we finished. So those could be a little bit older. Those could be shows that are that are a couple of seasons in. So if you're looking for something that's either, you know, that like we have a better idea and sense of kind of where the story goes and kind of how the thing develops. And we're going to be talking about a show that we don't, shows that we just don't think are worth watching at all. And so we're hopefully going to give you guys some ideas on that stuff. Uh, if you're interested in a particular show, because you clicked on this and uh, it's linked if you check down in the description there should be timestamps we're hoping that we can figure out how to do that um so spoilers ahead spoilers ahead um e there's no guarantee on when we're gonna get into or out of spoilers so we'll try and do that um anytime you click on a link to a new show hopefully we won't be spoiling another show but i honestly can't guarantee that at this point so i guess let's get started yeah um so i'll let you go first i guess unless right. you want me to go first and i'll give uh, kind of like could... what i want to do uh well so uh one of the things that i tried watching and i'm not like super into it but i'm not against it if you know what i mean oh it's yeah like, it's so, so you're like lukewarm yeah it's that uh what's what's its name is the spider thing the so i'm, oh, a, spider so I'm a spider so what yeah oh I yeah tried watching the first three or four episodes and i was like this isn't bad so but it's not like great okay it's another like i got reincarnated as a slime kind of situation that's what i thought like it's a so like how isekai is it <laughs> you know what i mean because <laughs> i think i'm gonna be talking about another isekai show uh maybe a little bit later on so so is it like faux isekai where it's like um uh like uh don machi uh is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon uh where it's like it's a video game world but it's like not an isekai or is it so like it straight up gets hit by the truck at the start of the show close to that but it's not just the spider chick so apparently it's like they're in Japan, right? They're in like the school as per usual. Yeah. And then like a fucking nuke goes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the first episode. They're like, I <laughs> there is a nuke. They're, they're, they're like just, some kind of explosion. <laughs> and they're just like, fuck it, nuke. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. And so then like one entire class wakes up in this new world, including like the teacher. Uh-huh. And they're all like spread out over the place. Like half of them are like nobles in this place. And then, like half of them are like monsters, like the the spider chick. Oh, that is that that actually, um, that does actually sound kind of at least like interesting and fresh. It sort of reminds me of. Um, did you ever watch Grimgar and Ash? I have not. So it, it's it kind of reminds me of that, if only because Grimgar and Ash starts out as like it's multiple people <laughs> getting isekai'd. You know what I mean? Ah. Uh. <laughs> There's like another show that's kind of like this where it's like a, a group of students and I forget what it's like a Netflix show I think and it's like a group of students they all get like isekai and it's like partially a mecha anime I don't remember its name it's on Netflix it's pretty garbage so <laughs> but yeah so like it, it 
focuses primarily on the spider chick whose name I don't remember whatsoever. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let me look it up. Yeah. You keep talking. But, uh, but then, like, every, like, it was, like, halfway through, like, the second episode, they flash to this, like, really fancy castle, and there's, like, this whole, like, noble, like, ball or something, and then, like, it shows these three, like, the duke's daughter, like, a, 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 a countess, and, like, this weird elf chick, and they're okay. like, hey, sensei, how's it going? And they're speaking to this this elf chick, and he's like, oh, it's fine, I found more people who apparently were nuked. <laughs> 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 and then he's like, well, I still haven't found, like, four people, but, you know, I'll find them eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and then it just, like, flashes back to the spider chick to just give, like, a, like not even, like, a taste, like, a waft of, like, some background plot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the spider's chick name is Sh- Shira Ori, or Shiro. Uh, according that sounds to, familiar. <laughs> uh, according to Wikipedia, which, as we all know, is the number one resource of everything, of all knowledge. Um. So, so like, like, is it a side character in this aside, or are they just like, or are they just like, okay, middle of the second episode, we're just gonna like take a plot detour over here and like. It, hang it out. was more of a plot detour than anything because it didn't focus solely on one because there was like. Like I said, there's, like, the Duke's daughter, uh-huh. or the Duke's son, and, like, the Countess or something, and all of them are, like, reincarnated people. Mm-hmm. But, like, the weird thing is, they're not, like, they were reborn as, like, children. They're, like, 20. <laughs> so, like, they just, so, like, inhabit the bodies of, like, already yeah. around people? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, like, do they know? Are they all, like, oh, yeah, we all knew each other from class. And, like... Yeah, like, they re- they recognize each other. They're, like, sensei? Or, like, whatever your name is. Like, show or coo or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, it's that guy that I know. Of course, him. Yeah. Cool. Ooh. So you said, like, you're, you're kind of lukewarm on it, right? Yeah. So, the why, you know? It might just be that I, like, didn't get far enough into it that it didn't, like, establish itself enough, if you know what I mean. Um, like, there is two schools of thought on that. There's the, there's, like, the writer ranged, or the, uh, the broader sort of accepted idea of the three-episode rule, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, the three-episode rule for people who aren't familiar with it somehow, but are watching the show, the three-episode rule is you can't judge an anime until you've watched three episodes. Um... Then you get like uh, like Digibro and some others who have come out and basically been like, nah, uh, the first episode is like the one that's supposed to interest you. And so it's like, it's going to be the one that has the most effort put into it. And so like, if you don't like a show after the first episode, you're probably never going to like a show. Mm. Well, I think, I, th- I think I'm going with the three episode thing because mm-hmm. like the first one was interesting, but then going through it more, it's still like it hasn't established enough of a plot for me to be like what the hell is going on <laughs> so is it just like- basically basically the spider chick she like spawned in this like massive nest of other spiders mm-hmm. and like she was like what the hell is going on where am i what happened i remember exploding <laughs> and then she's like she has to at one point like commit cannibalism <laughs> <What? is> really- <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like she's like i need to eat something there's a spider over there <laughs> I'm going to eat you. <laughs> she have like a moral quandary, like I can't eat another spider, or is it? It's just- not that. Well, she does a little bit. She's like, wait, that's my brother, and then she like she eats him, and she's like, oh, this is disgusting, <laughs> and she like vomits. <laughs> oh man! But she's like in this like dungeon kind of place, like this weird underground cave system, mm-hmm. and there's like adventurers because she like deals with she like makes this nest out of. Uh, spider silk but then like it catches on fire from a <laughs> dude setting shit on fire <laughs> all right just like just like the idea of like i i'm sure it's like played for like a really serious beat but like a dude just shows up and he's like okay time to set shit on fire like, that's takes pretty the fucking close to what happened actually the spiders, you know what i mean yeah and there's this there is this thing about how it's like it might be a video game because there's this weird like out of body thing talking to her where she's like, I want to do this. And she's like, you have acquired this skill oh. or something. Yeah. So it's like this weird mixture of both of the 
two previous ways that you said, like the video game or like the I got hit by a truck. So typically, like the I got hit by a truck so leads to video game worlds, which are always like poorly thought out. You know, it's always like it's always like they either like lean so heavily into like the video game aspect of it that like you would assume that like there's more like the world is just going to function differently. Like a video game medieval world is not going to operate under the same assumptions that a normal game is. Like if like the idea of health points and like mm-hmm. skills is like codified, you would assume that there's more sort of codification going on in this society. This is a hard topic to explain and I don't want to get into it. Um, well, so let me let me break your thought there. So there so there are skills and mm-hmm. there's magic, but there's been no like shown health points okay like there's nothing that's like this is how much damage i can take left yeah it's just that like some shows are like like it's total video game rules but other than that it's totally normal and you're just like no most most shows get this at least partially right and it's like the rule the world still like operates under like a basic assumption of like like for the people this is real but like there's this basic underground underlying current of, of your like, uh your nominally so that you have something weird going on yeah but like there's this underlying current of being a video game world so like there's like some sort of uh like there's like video game world tropes in the world and the people treat them seriously like the idea of like the adventures guild having quests and stuff like that yeah uh but there was this funny thing though she was like i she because she's supposed to be like kind of an otaku kind of character mm-hmm. like her old self was yeah so she was like, I know the perfect thing to do. I will give myself, because she had like skill points or something she could use. Uh-huh. She was like, I want the identify skill, because that will help so much in this situation. And she gets it, and then she's like, here, let me identify this thing. It's like, it's a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, 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 what? So she tries it again, it's like, it's a rock. <laughs> it's just like a voice talking to her head like, yes, it's a spider. Essentially, that's what happens. <laughs> Uh, so like so you're saying it's not establishing the plot and I'm interrupting you a lot to talk about dumb other stuff like uh like does it do we just like hang out in this cave for three episodes with like nothing really happening well so she explores a cave first off so it's this big cave system it's not like one just hole in the ground okay uh and uh she she's like okay well she almost gets cannibalized by the like mother spider I guess mm-hmm at one point, because, you know, spiders. <laughs> so, and uh, so, so she, like, es- so she escapes the, like, the group of spiders that are there. Uh-huh. And so she, uh, she runs away and she's like, well, I need to make a place of my own or else I'm gonna fucking die. Mm-hmm. So she makes this kind of nest of her own. And then she does, she gets, like, the spider thing where, like, something gets caught in it and she can, like, feel it. Mm-hmm. So she goes over and there's this, like, giant, like, poisonous frog thing that she kills. But, so that's something interesting is that, like, she acquires skill not solely by skill points. Like, she gets poisoned by this thing, and then she, like, gets acid resistance from it after she kills it. Okay. Uh, and there's, like... But, like, there's not really, like, this sense of, like... Plot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's hard to say, because it's, like, it's like, that sounds like there's a plot. It just doesn't sound like that's an interesting plot, you know what It's I mean? like it's not established. So what I think the plot actually is, is that weird, like, side glance at the rest of the characters. Because, mm-hmm. like, the teacher who's in this weird, like, young elf body was like, yeah, I'm trying to find everyone in our class, and we're missing, like, seven people. Uh, so I think, like, what's gonna happen is at some point, like... I don't know if, like, the group that they've established, like, the Duke's daughter, or the Duke's son, the Countess, and the teacher, like, find her. Mm-hmm. It's a possibility. I don't know if that's what happens, but... Yeah. And, like, at this point, three episodes in, like, I couldn't tell you what the plot is, aside she's trying to survive as a spider. <laughs> like, and, like, and, like, the problem with that story also is it's, like, just sounding like, it's, like, there's not a whole lot of stakes established. You know what I mean? Yeah, which is fine for like a show like uh, another piece of kind of like Konosuba, where it's like it's just a comedy show. It doesn't really need stakes. But if like you're, but if you're gonna like follow a show that's trying to have like a legitimate plot, having some sort of idea of where this show's supposed to be going 
and like how the character is supposed to develop and grow is kind of important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, there are stakes in the sense of she's almost died a few times to different monsters. Well, there, there's a difference. But that's just like, so, yeah, that's what would happen in a cave. <laughs> so there's a difference between, like, like uh, a, the stakes of a scene. You know what I mean? Like, a scene can have a stake of, like, oh, if I don't, if I don't fight off these spider monsters, I'm going to die. And there's a difference between that and, like, a narrative And, like, a stake. goal. Yeah. Like, like, the narrative stakes. Like, uh, uh, for instance, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my hero, right? Hero yeah. Academia. So, Hero Academia often, like, if you look at it, like, look at the tournament arc. The tournament oh, arc yeah. has kind of three levels of stakes in any one episode. There's, like, there's like the stake of the fight itself, which is typically just sort of a scene stake. It's, a, it's kind in of a character moment. stake. There's yeah. the there's the stakes of the actual tournament, which is it's like if you do well in the tournament, then people are going to notice you and you might you're get gonna, a job <laughs> and you might get like job offers and stuff. So like there's this real sense of like like yeah, this is important stuff. And then there's still the narrative stakes of the League of Villains and all that kind of like hanging out in the background. So there's kind of like three yeah. level. There's still like a narrative stake to this entire thing. Like the reason why the tournament arc is important in the overall arc of the show is that like. It's trying to is it's like these kids need to get stronger, so they need good uh they need to training. So they need good training and the way to get good training is they gotta win the tournament. And so that's all kind of subtextual to a certain degree within the arc itself. But it's like if if all that's keeping a story going is sort of scene stakes, like stakes in a scene, it, it's not very yeah. interesting. Uh it works for some structures. Like uh, like shoujo manga, and shows like uh, Kaguya Sama, uh, you know all what is the what do other people call that? Um, whatever you know, like 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 shows like that where it's like the minor stake of every of any scene. It's fine, but yeah, without a narrative stake, it's hard to get like really invested in the story itself. It's like I like the characters, but if the characters don't have anything to do, who cares? There is something that they, like, established right at the end of the last episode that I watched, which is kind of interesting, okay. which could lead to something good. Basically, like, I don't know what how it works for the human people that are, like, reincarnated, but there's this, uh, there's this feeling that, like, basically, she, like, at the end, she killed this giant, like, 20 levels above her snake monster, mm -hmm. and it was like, you now have the ability to evolve. Here are the branches you can choose. Oh, okay. So it's like, it's possible that, I mean, like, you have to. There's no way that you could tell this story from like, oh, this character is always a spider. It's like the slime, yeah. it's like the slime isekai problem. It's like, eventually the character has to have a physical human form, you know, for us to see, to for like, or maybe not even that, but it's like, it's like the ability of this character to be more than just a like a monster yeah. like it needs to be able to have like uh some way of interacting with people yeah for the story to actually gain any sort of moment interesting um so like as you sit now assuming you haven't just finished watching it because i think like uh i think when like you're when you just finish a thing or like you just stopped a thing like your emotions are kind of different about it so mm -hmm. is it is it one that like you're on the teetering edge of I'm not going to keep watching this or is it one where you're like I think I'm going to watch a couple more episodes and see. I think it's like I'll give it another episode or two. Okay. But after that if it's not like anything's been established I'll drop it. All right. We'll check in next episode of this rant next, thing. <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> on the rant thing to check in. All right. Uh, for me I kind of have a couple things that I could talk about. Um. I mean, I have it's other kind things, of a, but yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of a show that I started because I've started like this week. I started three shows, uh -huh. um, and I think I'm gonna break the rules and kind of okay. maybe talk about maybe talk about them in kind of a kind of three different ways because I think they're kind of more interesting in that sense of like, I don't know. Uh, so basically, I started and I've been watching Wonder Egg Priority. Uh. Uh, Hori Mia and 
uh, Jobless Reincarnation. The third one I started watching because of like all of the discussions around it. Yeah. That's like, the like one a lot of people are like, about, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a lot of people are like, this show's really good. And a lot of people are like, this show's kind of creepy. And I see where both sides are coming from. And I'll, I'll maybe we'll get into that at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. Um, so, so if, if we're just going to go down the list, I would say that I, I don't really want to talk about Wonder Egg Priority because I think that does a show that like people just need to watch. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. It's like is it it it, it spoils it in a way that it can't recover it. I guess it, it it's more that like the show itself is like talking about the show and like trying to like trying to like explain <laughs> piece apart why it's good and like why you should watch it. Well, in a way, I think detract from the experience. Gotcha. It it's a show that is like. It's one of those shows that, like, when you watch it, you understand that the person who's making it is doing something that is so deeply personal. If that makes sense. Like, the story itself is so intimate and personal to both... In both the way that, like, it's constructed. So it's like, we spend so much time sort of with these... With, like, certain characters and the way that we... In the way that the show frames them. And with kind of like their struggles and what they're feeling and things of that nature. And it's like, it's hard to like really be like, okay, let's talk about this. Uh, maybe once the season is over, uh, we'll do like, we may, we may do something that's a little bit more um, reviewy reviewy of it. But at this point in the season, what I would say is that it's gorgeous. So it's made by Cloverworks. Um, okay. So Cloverworks, if you don't know, did a uh, bunny girl senpai, a couple of other things. Uh, they're like a shoot off of uh, Aniplex. So Sony, they're like somewhere in that group, but it's like, so it's a gorgeous show. Uh, a lot of work has gone into it to make it just look good. It's well animated. It's very fluid. Um, it, your first impression within the first 10 minutes are probably wrong. Okay. Uh, in that the show, the show has a lot of, the show is primarily focused on like kind of the emotional journey of the characters, but there's still some action scenes and everything in it. So it's like kind of watch a little bit. Uh, it's definitely a show where you have to finish the first episode. Ah, and then basically, uh, to sort of give it away, but sort of not the show is about, uh, female suicide. Oh, and so it's like, so, the characters in the show are like kind of these grieving characters trying to work through their emotions and their guilt and their survivor's guilt. And so there's this deeply personal aspect to both the writing and the way the show is constructed that it's just, it's just phenomenal. And like, you just have to watch it. And that's, that's the only thing I can really leave you with without like really kind of, really kind of spoiling the show in a way. I think, I think it's a kind of show that's more of an experience than it is anything else. Um. Uh, okay then. <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to look it. I up mean, yeah. This. I mean, I. I. Like, it sounds weird, but it's definitely something where it's like you just have to kind of watch it, and then if you watch it, you'll understand. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. Uh, I can definitely see some people, especially people who are far more close to the issue than I am, who may not be able to sort of deal with like the way the show is. Um. Hmm. There's also an element I think of like. Of like it's not really meant for me, if that makes sense. Like like because it's so personal, there's you know uh, like there's this idea that like because it's so personal that like there may be a lot of people who watch it and may feel like, oh, this show doesn't really isn't really about me or talking to me, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so Yeah, you gotta be in the same not necessarily mindset, but same kind of experience yeah. point, I guess. Yeah, and so so like some people may be turned off by that. So like like there is that kind of warning, and you know, like I said, it is about suicide. So suicide's like a trigger for some people. Uh, they don't actually show this stuff on screen, uh, so it's not like you see the people actually committing suicide. But it's like if just the very topic itself is kind of a triggering thing, then probably you want to stay away from the show. 
but uh, it's just a great show. People should go watch it. I'm probably going to finish it uh, at the end of the, at the, you know, in a couple of weeks here, we'll probably, about a month or so, I think is when this season, current seasons end. So, you know, maybe we'll do like a full on review of that show. Uh, the other one that I'm much more capable of talking about is uh, Hori Mia. So Hori Mia is a romantic comedy show. Uh, okay, that <laughs> total difference, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, tonal whiplash. Other reason why. Uh, so, so quick, quick, quick question for you. Yeah, sure. So, is is because this is anime? Is the romantic comedy similar to the, the kind of romantic comedy we have here in America, or does it does it feel different? So it it is different in the fact that like basically all romantic comedies are set in high school. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> That's definitely so, so different. you kind of have to deal with that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It, but it, it's largely the same in the fact that there's always like boy, girl, meet cute, uh, dealing with issues. Uh, there, there is something to talk about, which is, and this will come up later in my review. So it's just kind of review, kind of reflections on the show. Um, so first off, let me say I like the show. I think it's really interesting, and there's an aspect of it that. So I've been watching anime for a while now. You know, basically I've yeah. grown up <laughs> with it at this point because I was born in sort of the mid '90s, and so by the time I was like five or six, like Dragon Ball was already on TV. So it's like basically I've grown up with like anime as being a thing. Like it was never like oh this cool cultural import that like the generation before me of anime watchers had where it's like your first exposure was like watching a friend who had a DVD or something of whatever show of like bebop yeah. or whatever. They had the DVD or the VHS, I guess not even a DVD. It'd be a VHS. You know, they had old VHS tapes and you watch them or like a it. spirit away or something came or, on somehow. Yeah. And it's so, it's, so it's like you either got it with like that stuff, but so Hormia is very clearly uh like it very clearly was written in like the mid 2000s. Like the oh, characters okay. have flip phones, uh they deal with CDs. <laughs> Do they have like iPod shuffles? No, they have CD players. Oh man. So it's like it's like sometime in the very early 2000s, like pre-2005. Like between 2000 and 2005 is kind of like when Jeez, it's clear the wow. show was written <laughs> and there's this really interesting feature to it because of that which is the art style is is more in line to what it was back then so it's like you kind of have this older art style that like uh i believe it's still i believe this show is also cloverworks so you know cloverworks good job this season killing it um where it's like where it's like what they've done is they've sort of done some things to sort of make the characters much more of sort of a modern sensibility but express like they've taken an older art style and they've sort of passed it through and do like a sort of a more modern sensibility so there's this idea of like there's something about this show that like for people like me that there's almost this nostalgic feeling to it there's like a warmness that's just like oh this art style this old art style before like uh a1 pictures and the kirito face <laughs> Hmm. Where like all the male protagonists look the fucking same. Actually, yeah. Um, I've fallen in love with you, but you look just like my brother, like and my father, yeah. and the gym teacher. <laughs> yeah, you all look like Kirito. Um, but uh, so like like one feature is like all the girls have like those really big eyes, you know, like like the anime eyes, you know that idea, like the, the stereotypical anime eyes, yeah, like 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 that Sailor Moon aesthetic is kind of yeah. what you're getting, and so like there is that sort of element to it, and so I'm I'm free to acknowledge that that's happening, um, but because of also the time it was in, it has a bit of a legacy of how these shows are written. Or like how mm-hmm. these manga are written in that you you still see this today with a lot of them, though a lot of shoujo manga slash anime today, what they do is they kind of, is they still kind of have this idea of a storyline kind of playing out in the background where things are more connected together. But okay. back in the old days, any one issue of a shoujo manga is it's basically you establish the characters and then they have a wacky sort of conflict. 
So there's like a sort of a almost like a gag plot, if that makes sense. So, for instance, mm-hmm. from the show, one of the plots that's very clearly a gag plot from the manga is like she she's trying to talk about him with her mother, our main character, our main female character, Hori. Our main two characters are Hori and uh, I believe it's Miyamura. So Hori, Miyamura, Hori, Hori Mia. So Hori's trying gotcha. to like explain. She's trying to talk about Miyamura for various reasons. That uh, so basically, and she can't remember his name. Like she doesn't know his first name. And she like, realizes that like she's been hanging out with this guy for six months, and she doesn't know his first name. I had a similar sim. Uh, situation happened in my life <laughs> and so like, like like clearly the plot of this issue was and then of this part of the show is that like she's like going around and she's trying to like not have to ask him what his first name is because that's going to be really awkward of being yeah. like you've been <laughs> over at my house and been hanging out in my house for six months and i'm my, and i don't know your you, first name i don't know you it's so like she like she like tries to check the attendance sheet and like it's not there she like she like spies on them in the men's changing room while they're getting ready for gym, hoping that the dudes are gonna say his name. Um, and then finally, you know, then there's the comedic payoff. But it's like it's like you have those kinds of plots where it's like there's a very sort of simple, uh, there's a very simple problem, and the characters kind of go through some wackiness, or they have some sort of resolution to the problem, and that's kind of the plot of the manga. And then. But overall, nothing really changes, and the mangas are pretty static. You know what I mean? Like, the main characters aren't, like, getting closer to being together or not. And I think, and I haven't looked this up, but I think uh, sort of towards the end of its run, the author put in more of a storyline where the characters kind of do get together. Like, this author knew they were going to wrap it up, so they kind of finish, they kind of finish it on a good note. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's various reasons why I think this, and that's due to the structure of the episodes, like the story structure. So here I'm going to kind of talk about the story. So I guess if you skipped here for the Horimiya stuff, uh, other than that little bit where it's just kind of explaining a gag, kind of here's now where we get into more spoilery territory. Um, so the structure of it is there's these two characters. They're in they're in high school, and. Uh, they both kind of have this sort of they're kind of stereotyped to a certain degree by their classmates like she's the uh, popular pretty girl and he's kind of the loner kind of weird looking otaku guy right yeah but what happens is through basically just kind of a coincidence uh, her little brother ends up like running into him on the street and like there's a issue where like he now all of a sudden in his sort of out of high school persona runs into her in her out of high school persona where like she's not sort of this prim and proper popular girl but she's more of like sort of this loud brash tsundere type character and he's like he's got like 18 piercings and he's got fucking tattoos <laughs> what the <shit? laughs> yeah and all the character you know and it's like it's like and he's kind of a dumbass <laughs> And he's a weirdo. Well, that, that's like that, that has to happen. Almost every <laughs> protagonist is in some form of dumbass. Well, well, like like the joke, the joke that they tell is that like he's like the loner dude with glasses, and like she's yeah. looking at his grades, and she's like, "Aren't loner dudes with glasses supposed to be good students?" <laughs> and he's like, "Have get Fs." <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so it's like it's like they run into each other in that way, and so it's like they sort of build this relationship where where it's like. They build this relationship between the idea that, like, only they kind of see the other person for who they really are. Uh, and so they okay, kind of build that's... this relationship. And so there's this sort of idea as I think the series is going on. And I'm not that far. I've kind of watched the first three episodes. Um, and I could talk about kind of one of the pro- The problem with it is more structural, but it's like there's this idea that they're getting closer and closer to like actually realizing that they want to be together and trying to do that. Right. It's typical romantic comedy stuff. So we, with, uh, so I'm a spider. We talked about narrative stakes, right? The show does a very good job of setting up what the narrative stake is, which a lot of, a lot of these shows kind of just kind of leave on the back burner, which is Mm -hmm. they're like, if like high school will eventually end and we're going to lose this relationship. 
Yeah. So it's like, so it's like both of them have that realization separately where it's like, she's like, she's like, Oh, he's eventually going to stop coming over. And he's like, Oh, she'll eventually will move on. And I'm going to be alone. Um, okay. So that's the narrative stake, right? Is it's like, if our main characters can't get over themselves and like, yeah. And like kind of get together, then, you know, all of this stuff is going to fall apart and they're going to be unhappy. Clearly, that's not going to happen. It's a romantic comedy, but that's the narrative stake. Uh, which is why you're interested, is you're like, okay, how's this going to evolve? The problem is that I think, is I think from the way that the show is structured, is that a lot of that overarching narrative stuff is from the end of the manga. And that a lot okay. of the intro stuff, I think, is more towards what I was talking about before, where basically all you ever have is it's like you have these characters and they have wacky subplots. Strange. Okay. That's, yeah, I see what you're saying. And so the reason for that is that the structure of every episode, episode one is pretty good about this, but for instance, two and three kind of had this problem of it seems like they take, they're taking separate chapters that aren't actually next to each other in the publication history and they're sort of trying to synthesize them together so like a lot of shoujo stuff that has that comes from that comes from that that uh we're just doing gag stuff when they adapt those for they adapt those from uh anime like uh kaguya sama and uh monthly girls nozaki kun uh both two excellent shows people can go watch them if you're interested in those shows, you're going to like Horamiya and vice versa, probably. Um, so, like, what those shows will do is they'll have, like, a before-the-commercial-ad-break story and then an after-the-commercial-ad-break story, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So they'll be like, okay, we're going to have one story where, like, uh, where, like, we run into side character A. Uh, and they're the okay. freaky... Uh, and we're going to deal with uh, the sort of weird female best friend character, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have episode B where the two characters get stuck out in the rain or something like that. You know, like, like that's kind of the way that these two things are done where like A and B might have something very, like there's almost no connection between A and B. They're just two stories being told in a single episode. The, the problem with this structure of like structuring your show this way is of course, uh, like you'll introduce something in one episode, but that character or that person doesn't really come back for like another two or three episodes. So you can try and put those two episodes together, right? If it's like, oh, I'm gonna introduce side character A, who's the wacky female best friend, and side character B, who's kind of like the the weirdly negative male best friend or something like that, and then like- <laughs> The pessimistic asshole. <laughs> but like eventually in like two or three episodes, we'd have an episode where those two characters, where like they're the focus. Right, but uh -huh. but in between those two introductions is like all these other episodes. So it's like a smart person. So like a smart director might go, okay, we're going to take where we're introduced to female best friend, and we're going to take where we introduced to male best friend. We're going to make those an episode, and then we're going to put in this episode. That way, when we get to the episode where they're together, like like maybe we'll do them even in three parts. So it's like we can tell kind of an overarching narrative. Uh, the problem with that is, of course, that you have this weird issue in the story structure where each act where you have kind of like three act ones, three act twos and three act threes. So like, you'll go like act one, act two, act three, act one, act two, act three, act one, act two, act three. So like the story doesn't really form a narrative except in like the most meta sense. And I yeah. think I realize that this is like getting real heady, but I think this is like a problem that Horamiya kind of ran into which is they wanted to do the stuff that people liked or liked more which i think is the later stuff the more narrative stuff but to do that you have to have the setup stuff right yeah if we're, if we're gonna have say uh to get into kind of a spoiler for the third episode for instance i'm gonna look at the third episode because it's more fresh in my mind the third episode starts with the main character the main guy niyamura slash izumi whatever uh, Izumi, he's kind of hanging out and it kind of goes through his backstory a little and it talks about why he uh, about how like people when he was like a kid thought he was weird and they didn't want to hang out with him 
And now all of a sudden, Hori, Yuko, and uh, Ishikawa, I think, like the three, like the main girl and the two best friend characters, like now all of a sudden now we're forming a friend group and he doesn't know how to deal with that. And so it, it's kind of an episode focused on him and this Ishikawa, the male best friend character, kind of developing their relationship, right? Yes. But the subtext of their relationship, which is kind of established in episode two, is the fact that Ishikawa wants to date Hori. So the problem is, is that I think, is that like this first episode, this first part, so, like, there's a payoff to this, which is eventually these two characters have an issue where they get in a fight. It's a really stupid fight about, like, and it's, like, a comedy sort of beat of, like, they just kind of end up roughhousing or whatever because they're fighting over the fact that uh, the male best friend is wants to be with her but realizes that she wants to be with him. But that is predicated on the fact that there's a storyline where she is sort of she has this conversation with another side character who kind of is like teasing her and is like, Oh, well, since you're not dating, uh, you're not dating the main guy, Miyamura, I'm going to try and get with him. Cause he's really hot. And like, that's a joke is that like, he's actually really hot. And, but he like has to wear his hair down and everything. Cause he has 16 piercings and whatever. Yeah. Um, this is so fucking convoluted. Exactly. It sounds like. So, but, but, so, like, like, because he overhears that and that leads to this story, but you want to tell this fight story, uh, but to tell this fight story, you also need to establish their relationship. So you kind of have all these parts that you have to do. So what they end up doing is they take these three stories and they're trying to kind of intersplice them together into a single kind of narrative in an episode, if that makes sense. It so, sounds like way too much. <laughs> so, so like, like episode one is like, okay, we're gonna do our act one, which should be our act one beat, is we're gonna introduce this this conversation these two characters have on the roof of the school. Okay, they're gonna, he's gonna feel like he's a loser. He's gonna go up to the roof. They're gonna talk to each other, and he, like Ishikawa is gonna reaffirm that they're friends. Okay, that's our act one. And then we're going to introduce sort of this middle part where Hori is having to deal with her relationship with him and like figuring out what she really wants. And then we're going to do some other stuff kind of interjected in the middle. That is weird filler. That's probably going to be relevant to episode four that I haven't seen yet, but we're going to do some other stuff. And then we're going to kind of come back to the fight. But because of that, and because of the structure of the manga, what happens is that you kind of still have this problem where you have an act one and act two and an act three that kind of all correspond in different ways and don't really form a nice a nice clean narrative arc but instead of being kind of where they're distinct stories it's become where it's like you have an act one and act two then an act one then another act then an act three then an act two then an act one then an act two then an act three then an act three if that makes sense uh i got base idea of what it, you're saying like, it's too fucking crazy but yeah <laughs> so so basically uh they're trying to use these different chapters they're trying to use different chapters to form a b and c plots but because these were never meant to be a b and c plots there's this weird pacing issue within every there's this weird pacing and almost like a bipolarness to every episode um and that's basically kind of like when i stop and i'm looking at this show i'm I'm like okay this is kind of an issue and this could be something that like is really frustrating as you kind of go along. Yeah, I'm getting frustrated just listening to it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's sort of weird, and it often feels like you're, you're getting into something, and then it just kind of wraps up, and then you go into something else. Uh, but because they're trying to, like, combine them into an overarching narrative, there's, like, this weird sense of you have a story that's being told kind of on the bookends of an episode, and then you just kind of have some other stories kind of being told in the middle, and then we get back to the bookends. So there, there's this weird pacing storytelling issue. Boy, that was a lot of stuff to just talk about one show. Yeah. Uh, as far as my, as far as my recommendation, I'm probably gonna keep watching it. You know, if you're into romantic comedy anime, you know, it, it's pretty good. Uh, I find that the characters are really, uh, the characters are pretty realistic to a certain degree. They have this weirdness that often happens where it's like. The characters have like an adult way of dealing with their emotions, and what I mean by that is they have like adult emotional intelligence. They're like, ah, oh, I'm not feeling like bad the, because of the ex- developing situation of teenagers. Yeah, like teenagers don't know what the fuck they're feeling, 
or like they're they, they know what they're feeling, well. but they like 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 they don't have kind don't of have to deal with it. They they don't have like the adult brain of being like, I'm sad right now, but I'm sad because I'm dealing with the fact that this character is treating me like like I feel like this like like you know what I mean like like ah clearly the reason I'm feeling sad is that this character might leave me at some point. And so I need yeah. to figure out a way to deal with this relationship, and I don't know how to do with that. And then they kind of have like adult moments where it's like they like there's a conflict, and they don't like take out their problems on the other person. But then they also do the, but they also have dumb teenager reactions to their emotions, and it's kind of this weird combination that I'm not explaining it in a way that like makes a whole lot of sense. But I was thinking about this show, and I was I was like, oh, I should write this down. This is a really interesting observation i've had and then i didn't and so that's why you're getting the chopped up version of this spot <laughs> uh but i like it uh i think it's cute you know that's what you want out of those shows so watch it i guess if you're into romantic comedies watch it if you aren't don't that that's my recommendation uh I, I don't know if we're going to come back and talk about it any more than that, because to be honest, that's kind of, unless like something really weird happens and I want to talk more it about it. turns into, the main, the main female character turns into a yandere and <laughs> starts killing everyone. Now she's, she's definitely a tsundere and you know, the other reason I like that is that you can just inject that tsundere shit right into my veins. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like if you're like, this show has a good tsundere in it, I'm like, solid, give it to me, give it all to me. All right, boy, almost 50 minutes. I guess we got time for one more show. You got one that's like just burning? Uh, well, so I'm thinking I'm going to drop Black Clover. Oh, really? My, yeah. So how far did you... So I've watched Black Clover. Yeah, uh, you haven't watched like all of it though. You're like no. still season... Well, not season. You're still like the first major arc. Yeah, right? so if we're talking about dropping Black Clover, I did drop Black Clover. And the reason I did is... The show, I feel, and you can get into this, is I felt like the show didn't, like the show is betrayed by the way in which it is paced and the way in which it's produced. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is like... Absolutely. Like, like the show could be really, really good if it didn't have to put out an episode every week. Yeah, so spoilers for what happens to yeah. people because I'm going to go and way me, ahead with Keegan. But yeah. Yeah. So, Keegan, you ended, like... So, I forget where you so, told me, but it was, like... Uh, so, I ended... Midnight Sun fight or something? So, I ended... From what I remember, they're, like, going to investigate... He already has his sword that, like, absorbs magic and, like, shoots it back out. Yeah. So, he has that, and uh, Sasuke-kun, or whatever his name is... Um, uh, yeah, what's his face? <laughs> um, uh, know you know who I'm talking, talking about. about. Uh, everybody yeah, who watches yeah, the show Everybody knows. knows who you're talking about. Sasuke-kun. Uh... <laughs> Sasuke Kun got his fairy, um, and yeah. So you they're, fought, they're he kind fought of, the weird diamond fire guy. Uh, yeah, something like that. I remember that they're just now starting this fight against the what is it, the Spade Kingdom or something like that. Um, uh, they that is the Diamond Kingdom. The Diamond Kingdom, whatever. Uh, so they're starting this fight. I vaguely remember that there was a dude who used zombies or something. He used what? He used like zombies or something like that. Like he, oh, like yeah. he attacks so the capital this... and like yeah. So he's part of the Midnight Sun. So maybe if, yeah, I'm confusing. Met... Maybe, maybe I, I've met. So I remember the Midnight Sun, but basically I'm part of now. They're like because they're going to war with this kingdom. Um, they have to go explore this underwater temple for something. I forget what. There's a MacGuffin down there. Okay, so you're you're getting things very much confused, but I know absolutely. Where you are. <laughs> uh, so, so so it's me, basically me, the first beach episode. <laughs> the first beach episode. That's where I stopped. Okay, so uh, in a it's it's a MacGuffin, but it's not first. Okay, off. so uh, you might remember this from uh, I forget what it is, but it's like very early in the series. It's like. They go to this place, and there's the dude with the ice powers who tries to kill, like, the entire town. Yes. Yeah. So, remember how... Uh, and that the was bird... the town where, like, the dude who with, like, the mirror warping or whatever and his little sister? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I so, remember you remember that. how there the, how the bird... There's the bird that, like, hangs out with Oster, right? Yes. So, remember how it, like, it had this stone in its mouth that it handed to him? No. 
So it did that. <laughs> okay. So there are these. Okay, well, never mind. Do you remember Yuno? That's his name. Uh, Sasuke Kun's Yuno. Okay. Yeah. So Sasuke Kun. Yeah. So you remember how he has that necklace? Uh, vaguely. The only thing I remember about him is that like, is that like he's, he's clearly a parody of Sasuke. <laughs> yeah. Or at least, except for not an asshole. <laughs> or at least, I hope he's supposed to be a parody of Sasuke. From what I watched, <laughs> like I hope the author doesn't legitimately think that like this dude is cool. <laughs> so so basically, uh, there are these magic stones uh-huh. that the Eye of the Midnight Sun are trying to get. So I remember the and, Midnight Sun. Yeah, so they're like the main antagonist. Okay. At least for the first major arc. Yeah. Uh, because I remember so, they uh, fought they fought the ice dude. There's a cave, and they're fighting in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, Lick, and they like, try to kidnap all the children. Children. Yeah, they're trying to kidnap the children to like get their magic, their mana power, or something like that. Yeah, something weird. Uh, they're fighting in the cave. Then Light shows up to like save his little underling, and he's kicking the shit out of Asta. And then, uh, and then Yami, Yami sh- shows and up. And Yami shows up. And the I believe this OP is the Black Rover OP, which is the only song I have on my i, like the only Black Clover song I <laughs> I have on like my phone because it's great. And the yeah, OP is yeah. fucking awesome. And it shows this awesome fight between the two, and you're like really hyped for it because you're like, oh man, this fight's gonna fucking rule. And then you get so to the that, actual fight in the show. Say... <laughs> yeah, and it's not. It is not good. <laughs> They they build it up, but it's not. Yeah, like, there's like, one really good fight that I will say happens, which is the the Wizard King versus Lich, or whatever his name is. Yeah, because I I think because they're like almost exactly powered. But mm-hmm. so here's a spoiler that happens: Lich kills him. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. So, and does like, Sasuke Kun become the new Wizard King just to like further like dig that well, no, dagger plot, into the back? Plot plot twist. Uh, it's, his name's like Chrono something or another. Yeah, Julius. But, it's so a, it's basically, like, Julius Chrono Magus or something. So yeah. Julius, so he. I found always think this, of him as Orange Julius. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Orange so Julius, the old, Wizard King. He found this old artifact that he's been storing magic into, and uh-huh. it basically revives him. But he's like 16 years old. Ah, oh, okay. That gets revealed after the final battle, but so everyone thinks he's dead. Okay. But so he like sacrifices himself to save the town, which is how Lich kills him. Mm -hmm. Because Lich does this like crazy summons giant light blades that'll kill everybody in the entire kingdom. Okay. So he pulls the Frieza basically. Yeah. Of like, I'm not going to win the fight, so fuck it. I'm going to just kill everybody. Basically, yeah. Okay. But uh, so that's like the one fight I will say was super good. Yeah. I mean,. Like, that sounds like the sort of fight where it's like, it better be good. It better be, yeah. <laughs> like, so, so how, so back to the getting the stones. Mm-hmm. So they're getting these stones because they need them. Because you know how, uh, Lich, Lich is actually supposed to be a, uh, an elf. Okay. And so the elves are basically annihilated, which, uh, the, the giant demon skull, that's what happened. Like, they, he, all of the elves died, and the demon showed up. Oh, okay. So it's like, because I know that like the demon thing is important because that's like why there's a wizard king. Like that's, and also yeah. because Asta's a demon, I think something like that, right? Uh, his his spell book is controlled by a demon. Okay, yeah. But he has like the willpower to withstand him or something okay. like that. Because because I know that he has like a, I haven't seen it, but like through the osmosis of being shown in trash. Um, <laughs> I know that like he has eventually has like a demon form and it's like, Oh, Oster's yeah, using it, his do- demon it form. does come into play later on because basically he gets put on trial for being a demon. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> and then the black, and then the black bulls burst into the scene and almost kill everyone before the wizard King shows up and is like, stop. <laughs> is this when the wizard King was dead? No, this is afterwards. Okay, he he okay. sends uh, the fire dude and the, the weird I have hair going down to my nose guy. Oh yeah, Noel Noel's bully. Noel's older brother. Yeah. <laughs> Noel's abuser. Yeah. That that gets explained to some degree too, why he's like that. Because basically I, I uh, feel, so so I feel like I know I feel like I know why it's like that, and that like 
I've watched the show enough. I, I isn't it like isn't it like they're like a super magic family and like he's abusing her because she's like just shitty. <laughs> and he's like he's like it's he's like he's like so you're yes shitty. To the, yes to the and, yes to the first part, but no to the second. He's, he's, like, he's like you're a shitty mage and you're gonna bring dishonor onto the family. So. That's why the other brother and sister are like that, okay. but not the oldest, because the oldest knows the truth. And the truth is that, so this is the entire second major arc, basically, Okay, is that... Uh, is that Noel spade, is Jesus? In the end, kind of, yeah. <laughs> really? The, the heart, the heart, the queen of hearts, the, of the heart kingdom is yeah. like, you and I are going to kill this guy. Not Asta, not anyone else, you and I, Noel. Mm-hmm. But so then the second arc of this is that there is this war brewing in the background of the uh, Spade Kingdom, basically are like Asta, but like completely possessed. Oh, okay. And so this de- this devil, this demon or whatever they call it, uh, is the same one that killed Noel's mother. Ah, oh. And that's why, like the the older brothers, like I did this because I, for one, I couldn't tell you why because there's a curse that if you say the dude's name, you die. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's like a weird, like, Voldemort, shit, he's here now yeah. situation. <laughs> I feel like that... Oh, man, I'm... there's, like, something in the back of my brain of, like, there's that premise is used in, like, some sort of movie or show, and it's, like, really compelling, but I don't... Mm. I, I don't... It's not coming to my brain now. But so, like, the main reason that I'm I'm dropping it is basically... For 20 whole episodes, they're like, we're training. <laughs> we're still training. We will train now. <laughs> it, it, and then, like, they cut to the end of the training. Mm-hmm. And, like, Asta can now fly somehow. <laughs> like, they don't even explain explained. that. They're just like, we're training. So, and all, and But we're not going to show any important developments that might be useful. Yeah. No, it's like, it's a, like a super hard... YouTube really crappy cut. Uh-huh. It's like we're training, end of training. The Spade Kingdom has invaded. Asta, you're gonna go save everybody. <laughs> and he, you know that giant sword that he has, the like batter, the like the one that uses like a, a baseball bat yeah. half the time. Like his, like he his... hops on top of that and he starts flying on it like it's a <laughs> UFO. <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so they're literally like, we're gonna spend 20 episodes. Like, I could just imagine the production meeting, right? So somewhere, imagine a production table. There's, like, four Japanese businessmen sitting around. And one of them's like, okay, so we've got to plot out. Or they're, they're creative or whatever. So, like, they're Japanese businessmen, but they aren't wearing ties. And they have their shirt collars popped or whatever. And they're like, yeah. all right, so we've got the manga. Uh, we're about to catch up. We need to kind of stretch this thing out. How are we going to do that? Oh, I know. Let's do the One Piece thing. Where we're gonna take one one issue, yeah, and we're gonna split it in half, okay? But how does that solve our problem? We're gonna make that half an issue, half an episode, and but the beginning half of the episode is gonna be a recap of last episode. Pretty oh, much. <laughs> that sounds like a genius idea. So basically, we're gonna get a full episode out of half a manga because we're gonna do half an episode of new stuff. Then we're gonna literally replay that at the beginning of the next episode. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Sweet, cool. All right, so we're going to do that during the training arc? Yeah, because people love training arcs, right? Like, they're the most interesting part of the show. Yeah, nobody cares about the fights. Okay, great. All right, what's going to happen after that? Okay, so looking at it, uh, Asta's going to have a scene where he learns to fly on his sword. So, uh, and the Spade Kingdoms are going to attack. Okay, great. And one guy's like, okay, so, like, why don't we, like, flush that out a little and we're going to show that stuff in the training, right? Fuck no, we're not. Oh, speaking of that, you remember how you mentioned the sword that can absorb magic? Yeah. He doesn't fucking learn how to use it until these 20 episodes. <laughs> Aren't you like 300 episodes in front of me? It's episode like 130 something. <laughs> he like, gets into like episode like 60 or something like I know, that. I know. Christ. But he, he's literally there. He's talking to this. So how so they're in the heart kingdom, which they have magic differently. They use like magic runes in their thing to like superpower their spells. Mm-hmm. And so because Oz doesn't have magic, he's like, well, you got to figure out a way to do this. Uh-huh. And so he's like fighting this uh, like lightning guy. And he's like, OK, how are you going to hit me if I just keep teleporting everywhere? And he's like, I know 
I'll do this. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I do have something for this. Give me one second. Just like, just but like, they made just like, like they made like these really cool preferences like right before the training thing, and they're like training. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, like, like that just sounds <laughs> that sounds baffling. That it's like you have that like you know you're leading up to this event with this invasion. So like at the very least, you can use that as filler, right? Yeah. Like like supposedly there are going to be bad guys. Like, like, why don't we inject them and, like, they're making up their plans and, like, uh, it goes back to that old Al- Alfred Hitchcock Alfred Hitchcock thing, you know what I'm talking about? The Alfred bomb under Hitchcock. The, yeah, the Hitchcock <laughs> bomb under the table discussion, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? For people who don't know, so basically Alfred Hitchcock said uh, uh, Titchin is, like, you kind of have a couple of ways of pacing your movie. Uh, one is to is for Basically, your character is to be sitting somewhere and a bomb goes off. There's sort of an initial shock to it, and the audience is, like, really unexpected, but it's not very satisfying. Whereas if what you do is you cut, is you show the bomb being planted and you show the time on the bomb and you keep cutting back to, like, the timer, you're going to build tension. And so, like... So they they do a little bit of this. So there's this, like, minor uh underplot that's happening that does Mm -hmm. get us finished in like uh, five to seven of these episodes of the first 20 that is like the training (laughs) episodes it's that there it it happens before that too but like it ends within there Uh uh-huh it's that there's this so after the whole uh the elves so what happens is the elves got reincarnated into people okay that are there yep so like uh mirror guy gets taken over uh the teleporter dude's brother gets taken over. A mm-hmm. bunch of like really powerful people get reincarnated. Like uh I forget the like golden sun captain is liched. Oh. Or whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so basically they get taken over and they assault the entire kingdom and then it turns out that everything was the plot of this devil. Uh-huh. Like even like the original thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that that doesn't matter. But what happens afterwards is Yuna, yeah. So so Yuna, so uh, so Yuna. it's the it's the trial trope of like all the bad stuff that was happening was actually this guy. Yeah, they do fight him at the very end. It's okay. like a uh, it's, it's what's still her not, face it's still from Naruto. Very, yeah. Uh, you talking about a Rochimaru, or are you talking about? Uh, is, is it uh, is it like that ass pull with uh, Kaguya? Uh, Kaguya, yeah. It's basically where, that. It's where it's like yeah, right? Is it? Is like, that's the other thing. It's like that's not good storytelling. <laughs> but so yeah, so that happens. But so then after he's like on trial, like you know how there's this like super fucked up discrimination thing in the in the series, how like all the like really not powerful people are like kicked in the gut from like everyone else. <laughs> oh yeah, where it's like where it's like magical power is technically a uh, is like it's supposed to be like an analogy or metaphor for racism, except nobody who like except like. You know, it's like, Asta doesn't have any magical power, so he represents the oppressed, and he gets to punch people in the face. But, yeah, like, it, nothing actually ever changes, and all the people who are oppressed are still being oppressed. Yeah, so basically, after the whole major first arc, there's this, like, sub-arc that happens, of which case, there is these demon worshippers that, mm-hmm. like, they, like, saw Asta and, like... This dude is the fucking best. He's got a devil. Oh, I know this arc, we right? Because, this. like, cause like the end of this is, like, where Nova Kronos, I think that's his name, right? Like, Something the Wizard like King, he, like, shows up at the very end because, like, he's disappeared or whatever. And he, like, shows up at the very end and he, like, just fucking bodies all these fucking cultists. That is kidnap different. Asta. That is, that okay. is a different one. <laughs> okay. This, well, is I like feel after, like... this is after he died and shows back up. Okay. That was a like different a cultist old. plot trying to kidnap Asta. Yeah, so, like, there's two cultists. There's the <laughs> devil worshippers and there's the Midnight Sun. The Midnight okay. Sun is pretty much gone after this major arc. Okay. There's these, like, all these, like, suppressed, like, really not powerful people. They're like, we're mm-hmm. tired of this shit. We want to kidnap Asta. They managed to do so. They also kidnapped the bird person. The bird mm-hmm. that hangs out with him, which is actually, like, Yeah, because that bird's, 7, like, a person, years old. right? She's like seven thousand years old. Oh, of course. She was like. She also probably looks like she's six. It's fucking no. She's like fourteen. Okay, great. (laughs) 
fucking anime. So what man. she did, she used she has like sealing magic, and she did that on a devil, like the first devil mm-hmm. that like fucked everything up originally. Okay. And so like it caused her to be turned into this bird thing. Okay. But, like as the spell undid itself, she was able to revert back. Okay. But anyway, so she kidnaps her. She kidnaps. I forget what his name is, but the mirror guy's sister. Yeah. Uh, and so they like they want Asta because he's got the devil. And so basically, there's this whole thing of how like they're gonna kill him, but then they're not, but then they are, <laughs> and then they're leaving. Yeah. Okay. And that's like that's what's like at the end of that is at the same time when like hey we're gonna start training. <laughs> yeah. So what we're saying for the viewers at home, for the listeners, you didn't really have to watch this. I don't think. Uh, for the put list- it on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, <laughs> I mean, like. Uh, you really should have. Hopefully there's something accompanying this. Keep your interest if you're watching. Uh, is that Black Clover is very poorly paced. Extremely so. It uh, it basically is all the suffering of the old shonen style of publishing. and But with none of the good part. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, if if you're willing to put up with that, if you've watched every episode... No, not even if you've watched every episode of One Piece, because Daniel has, and he's fucking sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's just a nightmare. They really need to, like... They really need to just, like, be like, okay, we're just going to go to the season model at this point. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> my, my problem with it, you know, just to do this, is, like, that thing that I was talking about with, like, uh, Licked liked in yami fight is like because of the way that this thing has to be done where it's like they probably only work they probably couldn't work on this episode for very long they probably could only work on it for you know maybe four to six weeks (laughs) you know uh because of just like like the nature of this is that like these episodes are done like they're like they're finished before they have to go up to air it's not like they're rushing to finish them every week yeah, you know, like an episode is an episode's done, but like the problem is, is that because is because like you don't like a typical season release, like a team has something between six months and a year to work on thirteen episodes. Uh, whereas like these weekly ones, like you have to put out fifty two episodes in a year. So and that's why we maybe, get twenty episodes you know, like, of training. <laughs> like like if you get some breaks. You know, maybe you only have to put around 50. So it's like, if you just do the math, like, like they don't have any time to work on these things. And so it's like big fights like that, which like, if in a traditional sense, like this would be like an ep- this one in the first episode, typically like your big payoff episodes and typically the first episode, because you want the first episode to look really good because you want to like get people to watch the show. You know, typically they work on those a little bit longer. So it's like, instead of doing it, so like, that episode, for instance, would get maybe two months worth of work in animation. Especially that fight. That fight itself would be like a month's worth of work. Yeah. Uh, instead, you know, you have like, it just looks like crap. It's not very well paced. Uh, it's kind of janky. And it looks alright. Like, 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 that fight, the moment of uh, I forget what the word is. I think it's Sakuya or something like that. Um, like that moment where like the animation is supposed to get really good in Black Clover those moments are more like the animation gets passable and the rest of the time it almost is a slideshow yeah and so you want to you want to know some other really stupid stuff that's happened uh are we talking plot information or are we talking just in general plot okay plot we're, we're, kind, so, we're kind of running uh, a little long so hurry it up uh, well uh, yeah so we'll probably, probably cut some stuff things. out who knows how long this so you know is. how there's the the like different guild not different guilds but different like groups like the the black bulls or like the golden sun mm-hmm. so like the the purple orcas yeah the dude like the the whatever they're called the captain yeah he basically is like selling out the entire kingdom to the midnight sun <laughs> And then, so, like, they find out midway through this thing, through this meeting of all of them, and then, like, they capture him, and then, like, at the end, they're like, oh, we need his merchant abilities. He's fine now. He's no longer in prison. <laughs> I, I vaguely remember that. I feel like I've watched that, and I feel like I remember that he betrayed them. But I also remember that, like, so that's a moment where, 
you expect a big fight. Like you expect like a big cool fight, right? If it's like it awesome happen. captains going up against each other, that'd be awesome. Nope. Not not even close. Asta finds him because the dude has this like seems really overpowered. He has the ability to like mask his mana mm-hmm. and himself. He has like invisibility magic or something. Yeah. And then like Yami's like, I taught you how to do this, right? And he's like, Yeah, I know how to sense someone's oh, yeah, he's like, will he, or he's something. He's like, There's magic and then there because I'm the Japanese guy, me, Captain Yami, I'm going to teach you key. And he's like, he's over there! And they he, like, tackles him, and that's the end of it. Yeah, and he, like, uses his sword to, like, get rid of the invisibility. Yeah. But, like, and then uh, the one other thing Like, like it's that, worse. Uh, like, did you ever watch Bleach? I'm no, gonna make a I know comparison you, here. like, watch Bleach. Yeah, <laughs> I, I watched a lot of Bleach. So there's, there's a moment for all those hardcore Shonen guys who have watched Bleach. There's a moment in the 13 Court Guard Squad's arc where to save Rukia... One of the main female characters is about to get executed. And to save them, uh, the 13 court guard squads, there's like the 13 captains. So it's vaguely similar to Black Clover, where it's like you have these organizations within sort of this grander organizations, and each one has like its captain, right? And the captains are supposed to be like super strong. Like okay. the captains of like the two strongest captains take out the leader. Like they basically take out the, they like grab they like basically like do something to piss off the leader of the soul society like the most powerful soul reaper and like like their fight for the most part is going to happen off screen but like Mm -hmm. to set it up and so you're like oh man this is gonna be cool as fuck and like during it they also have other captains who fight and there's a really cool fight where it's like you get to see a dude whose ability is like he can like make the entire battlefield black like just pitch dark that's certainly cool. Versus like, <laughs> versus another guy whose ability is that like he can like create a giant, like a giant puppet. That or it's not literally a puppet, but it's like he creates like a giant. He like like his ability is to create a literal giant with a fucking sword. <laughs> not like cut shit. And like those two dudes are fighting, but like they like pull the captain off and like one of their little lieutenants who's like the second most powerful person in the squad, right? Is like following yeah. behind him. And like, uh, like they're about to fight, and the captains like pull out their zompak toe, and whatever they like get ready to fight, and so does so does the old man. But like, there's this idea in the show called spiritual pressure, which is like yeah. basically just like how strong they are, and like the lieutenant like almost passes out, like just being near what this fight is gonna happen, and like I think the captain's exact words are something like, like I don't have time to teach you how to stand basically what <laughs> yeah it's fucking bad it's like just this fucking badass moment where this old man like take he does the trope where like the old man takes off his clothes and he's like super and he's, like, fucking super ripped, ripped. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like he's been like walking with a cane he takes off his clothes and he's fucking super ripped and he like looks at this girl she's about to pass out and he's like he's like foolish girl i don't have time to teach you how to breathe you know or stand <laughs> or something like that it's like fucking awesome and like then they cut away from it because they're like we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> cut, it, cut it now! Cut it now! <laughs> but we're gonna show you the other cool stuff. <laughs> so so the, the so so, the so like, like 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 that that I use that as like the example of like if you're not going to show it, you can still build up to it and like be like yeah. oh man this would be really cool this is like really cool like what's happening is super cool like it could be like uh, Sasuke Kun or whatever is with his captain these captains are about to fight and Sasuke Kun who's like like a genius or whatever is just like getting fucking punked just by like standing nearby and like his captain has to like remove him from the battle and is like and it, was, and it was like you're not ready for this son and then he like goes back and then like we don't have to come back to it but we're like oh man that's awesome like when captains fight that's that's some legit crazy shit that'll be really cool down the line when like these characters actually like get serious or whatever yeah all right <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no idea what this is getting cut down to. There's probably some stuff in here that can get cut. Um, that was an episode. Uh, yeah. So we talked about... What did we talk about? We talked about The What I'm a Spider, which you gave a lukewarm... If somebody's not into Isekai, are they going to like that show? Uh, maybe. Maybe? Okay. It's like a, it's like a 60% chance. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so it's like it could be a thing, but there's a good chance it's not. <laughs> uh, Horror Mia, which I, if you like romantic comedies, give it a watch. It's you know if you don't and you but you're interested in something that like maybe you can watch and you know it won't require like a full like it's not a thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It's kind of a background show. You know, it doesn't require a whole lot of mental effort. The plots aren't very complicated. But, you know, it's just kind of a cool, chill show that people can watch. Uh, Black Clover is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> poorly paced. And then uh, go watch One Direct Priority. Uh, when when the show is... Oh, it's a great show. Uh, go watch it. If... When the season's over, we may do, like, a more in-depth look at some of these shows and we may do like more in-depth looks at the shows and if we're going to do one of those and wonder like priority is a good candidate so if we're going to do that which you should probably know before it comes out <laughs> go watch that oh man and if you guys have any suggestions for animes you want oh, us yeah. to watch and review put in the comments yeah man let me know what you guys are watching uh if you yeah. want to hear us rant about animes that are super long, like One Piece or Bleach or yeah. Naruto, go f- tell us. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite anime from the season? You know, put that in the comments. Uh, if you disagree with our assessment of something, uh, if you want to rant about Black Clover, whatever, comment below. Uh, you know, like the video, share it with your friends. Uh, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to the channel. We will hopefully do more of this stuff. We do more of this stuff when we get interaction with this stuff. So if you like yeah. this, mm-hmm. interact. <laughs> Even if it's just a comment saying, I liked this, then we'll do more of it. And uh, we will... Or if it hit the like button, that's also interaction. That's also interaction. And uh, we will, ho- you know, uh, check out the other stuff on the channel. There's basically nothing else like this. So if this is your first exposure, you know, um, hopefully there's be more. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>